something very positive today. We had this letter from Metro Church. I don't know if you are aware that we sponsor Metro Church. Um, and a little boy um, called John Collin, and, uh, who is in the Philippines. Oh. And it says this. Dear Wayne Cathy, Lighthouse Church, thank you. Your ongoing support to John Collin, your sponsored child maker, is making a real difference. We all at Metro Church are thankful and grateful. Amen. Amen. Great, great positive news for a change. There's so much negative news in the, in the, isn't it? That's great positive news. So that's come all the way from the Philippines and um, from, from John Collins. And uh, he's a little boy. He's up on the board if you want to look after. He is up on the board. We sponsor him. Um, and it's just great to hear that he's coming on. Pardon? Do you want to develop it now? Yes, if you want to. There you go, Mike. Well, let's just start by uh, saying hello to each other next to us. I, I know you've already said that, but let's uh, just turn to somebody and just say hello to them and uh, just greet them in the name of the Lord. Hello. Uh, it's great that you're here today. It's great you're here. I was expecting a little less because of what's going on on the television, but you're here and that's great news. It's, it's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And it, and it says this in Psalm 66. It says, Make a joyful shout to God, all your earth. Sing out the honour of his name. Make his place grow glorious. And say to God this, say to God this, How awesome are your works? Let's say that to God now. Yeah? Let's just say, How awesome are your works? Ready? How awesome are your works? Amen. Over to you, Sam. Thank you. Yes, we understand and we'll sing together. How awesome are your works? Thank you. 
are our healer, that you are our comforter and provider. Yes. And we also pray for Jay Lord as he goes in for his operation tomorrow, yes. that you go before him. Thank you. We thank you that your hand would be on the surgeon, Lord, that you you would just have your way. Um, and just pray for the family as a follow, Lord, pray for Wayne and Kathy and for your protection around them. We thank you, Father, for all that they do for you, Lord, in your name. And as we come to your word this morning, I just pray that our hearts and minds would be still, that our focus would be on you, Lord, and that we would hear what you want us to hear, that we would take away exactly what it is that we need. And I just thank you and praise you for everything that you've done in my life, in our lives, Lord, for what you are going to do. And I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In your name, amen. Thank you, Sam. Well, um, first of all, before, I'd just like to thank you for all the support we've received over the last week. And uh, thank you for uh, Kathy. Um, Ali would like to send her thanks for the prayers as well. Um, she, she is recovering. Um, she's got a, a way to go, but uh, all went well. So, uh, great news. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, well, well, last couple of weeks, yeah, sorry. The last couple of weeks, We've been, uh, we've been looking at Lighthouse Vision and the commitment we make to the Lord, the Jesus Christ Lord and Saviour. We, we looked at that, we looked at, uh, we've looked at the vision, we've looked at the, the Great Commission last week, you know, we looked at our commission. And uh, this week, well, I want to take the church to the tools, to the tools that we need to make this happen. Because I believe it starts with us, the church. Revival starts with the church, with the people, with the church. So we need to be an example. We need to be an example. That light on the hill, you know, that we talked about, that example, we need to be that. We need to believe, we need faith, that there's one thing that glues us together, and that's the unity of Christ. The unity in the Lord Jesus. That glues the church together. That glues us together. You know, when I think of unity, I think of the, the one for all and all for one. Do anybody remember where that's come from? Where that come from? One for all, all for one. I think as a child, I think uh, more of a boy thing, I'm sorry, but that's a girl thing as well. And uh, we used to, uh, we used to years ago, have swords, wooden swords. Well, they weren't wooden swords because we couldn't afford to have the proper wooden swords. They were twigs off the trees. But we would have twigs off the trees. And, then, and as a gang of us, or a, a group of us would get together, we'd go, one for all and all for one. You know, the three musketeers. You know, who remembers the three musketeers? Yeah, well, great excitement. On Saturday morning, uh, turning on the tally, watching the three musketeers. Yeah, do you remember those days or am I just that old? <laughs> oh, am I just that old? Yeah, but I think of that, well, that's unity, isn't it? That's unity, you know, that's unity. They had a pact between them and it was sealed with an oath. And, and they, they all sang out, and we, we would get our twigs and we would actually do that and go all for one and one for all. Now that's what I call unity, church. That's what I call unity. Church, are we all for one and one for all? Are we all for one and one for all? I don't want you to get your claims, you could get the claims we could. No, but maybe, maybe. But I really hope so. I really hope to. See, I believe a lot of churches struggle in this area. A lot of churches struggle in this area with this. But it's a starting block. It's a starting block for today's church. It's a starting block. We need unity. We need to be all for one and one for all. You know, 
and including us at Tabasco and other change churches. We from time have struggled in this area. You know, I'm not saying we're perfect. We have struggled in this area in the past. See, it's not attractive, you know. It's not attractive to be at divisions. Divisions is not attractive. I'm not saying we've got any divisions today. Pray we haven't. We all, we all look happy today. Are you happy? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But, but what is attractive is unity. Unity is attractive. It's attractive. See? And I've lost my way now, but there you go. You know, I hear on a weekly basis about churches and discontentment within the church. And it saddens me. It really saddens me. Discontentment in churches. We believers are, 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 have, have got discontentment. And the enemy relishes in that. Let me tell you, it's the enemy will relish in that. Yeah? You know? There's no more an enemy wants to see. You know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the enemy? I don't have to name him. Yeah? But the enemy, there's nothing more the enemy wants to see than the church struggling. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. You know, we warned that in John, aren't we? 10 10. Yeah? John says, you know, you know, watch out because the enemy is there. The enemy is, is there, he wants to devour, yeah? He wants to devour. But, are we struggling in this area? I don't think so, as I've already said. But I do think we need forewarning then. See, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, yes? To be forewarned is to be forearmed. And we need forearming. We can't be complacent. That's what I'm talking about. Church can't be complacent. We can't be complacent today. If we want to do what we have said, the vision, if we want to see, you know, people in this community coming to the Lord, and that's what we all want, I, I, I think so, yeah? If we want to be that light on the hill, yeah? We can't be complacent. And I believe we are the church by taking this stance, one for all and all for one, we become attractive. We become attractive. Refreshing and making you want more of Jesus. That's what we want, isn't it? Do you want more of Jesus? No? Perhaps not? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Do you feel refreshed? No? Hey, thank you, Mike. You feel refreshed. Somebody feels refreshed here today. Well, Ephesians 4, 3 to 6. I don't know if I... Yes, we've got it. Sorry. I didn't give it to you, Julian, but you obviously take that off it. It says this. And I'm taking this from the New Living Translation because it's a really good... Uh, it says, make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, as you have been called to one glorious hope in the future. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you really believe there's a glorious hope in the future? I hope you do. I hope you do. Yeah? There are many scriptures that help us understand this one. For all, for one, and one for all. But I start you in Ephesians. Paul was not responding. Let me tell you, we haven't got any problems, as I can see, of disunity in the church. I would hope we haven't. Yeah? But there was no problems in the Ephesian church of this. But what it was... What, they, what Paul was doing was forewarning them and forearming them. Yeah? Was saying he was doing that. He was not responding to a particular moral problem. He wanted to protect against future problems. And we should be looking at that today, church. We should be always moving ahead. 
Yeah? We should be always not being complacent. We should be always on our guard. Yeah? Guard your hearts, says Jesus. We need to guard our hearts, church. We need to guard our hearts. Paul made his purpose clear. He expected that his community of faith would walk in accordance with the heaven call and calling. Ephesians 4 1. In other words, what he was saying, as I said earlier, and as I'm going to keep saying, he was saying, forewarning is to be forearmed. He is saying, make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace. Yes. That's what we want to do, don't we? We want to bind ourselves together with peace. We want to keep in the spirit of God. Yeah? Yes? No? Yeah. Maybe not. I hope so. That is church today. Ephesians makes it clear that spiritual growth occurs primarily in community with others. You grow with others. Iron chat, sharpening iron. It says that. Iron sharpening iron. Proverbs 27, 17. That's one reason we need to meet together, church. That's one reason we need church. We need to be together. We need togetherness. We need togetherness. But we need to be one for all and all for one. We need that. See, the Bible says this in 10.25, not giving up meeting together as some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So all the more as we see the day approaching, we need to be encouraging one another. That's what it says. That's what it says. It doesn't say you can do church alone. It doesn't say that. That is a good reason why you can't do church alone. More people are saying to me, Christians, oh, I, I'm done with church. I don't go to church. We do church at home. Uh -uh. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. You need to be together. We need to be together in unity. We need to be together in one God. Yeah, We need to be together. Surely that is the work of those who believe in Christ, is it not? Isn't that not the work of those who believe in Christ? Hey, if you're listening, but don't go to church and you're a Christian, come along and try like those church. I'm not doing an advert here, but I'm just saying, come along, try it. Not perfect. We're not perfect. You know, Father and all, and yet you already know, I've said it many a times, a great preacher, would say to me, Wayne, if you find a, a perfect church, don't join it because it won't be perfect when you join it. <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. <laughs> but he's got a point, doesn't he? He's got a point. We're not perfect. We're, we're, we're work in progress. We're work in progress. Yeah? And I want to encourage you today, if you're listening and, and if you were giving up with church, well, come along, yeah? Don't give up meeting together. You may have been hurt. And, and you know, people do get hurt or have been hurt in church setups. Shouldn't happen, but it does happen. Give it a try. Come along. See, Matthew Henry, the great commentator, says this. Nothing is pressed more earnestly in the scriptures than to walk as become those called to Christ's kingdom and glory. By lowering us, understanding humility, which is opposed to pride. By meeting us, that excellent desperation of soul that makes men unwilling to provoke and not easy to be provoked or offended. We find out in much ourselves for which we can hardly forgive ourselves. Therefore, we must not be surprised if we find others, but which we think is hard to forgive. There is one Christ in whom all believers hope, and one heaven they are hoping for. Therefore, they should be of one heart. We should be of one heart. 
That's what the that's what accurate commentators say. No, that's easier said than done, isn't it? That's easier said than done. I'm a pastor. I know it's not easy. It's not easy. God did not say it would be easy. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I've got a bit more to come yet. I hope. And my pages are stuck together. The Bible teaches us how God loves and what God has done for us. But it also reveals his great expectation for us to demonstrate that agape love to our brothers and sisters. You know, it saddens me when, when you see fighting, when you see, you know, fighting over the colour of the church, fighting over the light bulbs, fighting over, you know, how we should be spending our money, fighting, yeah? We, I'm not saying we, thank goodness we did, we're not at this moment in time in any of that. But what I am saying, yeah, brothers and sisters regarding race, gender and nationality should love each other. Yeah? We should be loving each other. It's so easy to criticise, isn't it? It's so easy to talk down people's backs. It's so easy to gossip. It's so easy to alienate people. It's so easy, isn't it, to get into that trap. It is so easy to get into that trap. Many times, life throws a lot of rubbish at us, doesn't it? You know, let's be honest. Life can throw rubbish at you, yes? It can, yeah? And as Christians, we try so hard to keep up the faith. But somehow, doubt creeps in, doesn't it? Doubt can creep in, you know, into the way of our minds, where the war takes place. The war takes place in our minds, doesn't it? Have you ever been in a situation where you drop everything, look at the ceiling, and wish you were in existence? You know, people do. Have you ever wondered if the grounds could open up and swallow you? I've been in that situation. And I thought, oh dear. Let me tell you a situation. I got it. Perhaps not a, perhaps a funny situation, but something. And when I was working a long time ago in, uh, in the electrical trade, a lady came in who I thought was pregnant, sat down with her husband, sat down with her husband. And then we was having a conversation, and we got into a conversation, and I openly said, when is the baby due? And she turned around and looked at her husband and said, I told him I was still after the baby. I wish the ground could swallow me up. Yeah. I went bright red. I didn't know what to say. Embarrassing situation. But sometimes we get that. See? Jesus says, take heart, because I have overcome the world. Whatever problems you are going through, whatever you are going through today, Jesus knows. God knows. Yeah? We might hide it from We might be able to hide things. Yeah? We might be able to put a great face on. We might be able to think nobody knows. But God knows. God knows what you are going through. Jesus says, take heart, for I have overcome the world. Wow, we cling onto hope, truth. God says he will do it. For it says that in the Bible. It says he will do it in the Bible. It says that when he says in Isaiah 46, eight, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purpose and I will do it. See, we are the God of truth. We are the God of truth. We are one body in Christ. That is unity, one body in Christ. Many bodies, one body in Christ. All for one and one for all. Wow, what a motto that is. For those is one body and one spirit just as you have been called to the glorious hope of the future. There's one body and one spirit, as I've already said, 
We have unity because of what we share in common. We say back and forth, don't we? Yeah? One body, you know? One spirit in Christ. In Jesus we share one body, one spirit, one hope, and our calling. Our Lord of faith, one baptism, and one Father. Each of the common areas is greater than the potential difference. Let me just say about that one baptism. And some people say that is there are, I told you, there's not baptism in the Holy Spirit. Some think because Paul says one baptism, that the idea of baptism of the Holy Spirit is a subsequent experience is invalid. But Paul only spoke you of baptism by water, which is a visible token of God's common work in every believer. And this is a base of unity. They are separate baptisms for Jews and Gentiles. We as one. They, you know, there was, yeah? Gentiles before, yeah? The Jews were privileged people. But now, it's all one for all, all for one. The concept of baptism in the Holy Spirit is spoken in clearly in Matthew 3.11, Acts 1.5 and 11.6. And this may be considered an initial and sometimes dramatic experience. At once you've got the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We all have the Spirit in us. A filling God wants to continue through a person's Christian life. See, John 17, 20, 21 reminds us we can be united with God. See, it says this, we can be united with God. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? I hope it's good news. Yeah? It seems good news. We have been invited into a unity with Jesus as Son, God and Father, God the Spirit and one another. Our union in Christ our union with each other is grounded in our unity with Christ, in Jesus, in God. See, I want to tell you about a, a fish. It's going off the course a bit. But in, um, off the end of Wyoming coast, in the seas, there's a fish with a distinct colouring. But divers have recognised a phenomenal situation with this one fish. It's got brilliant colour in it, and it's called the gold saddle goldfish. That is true. Look it up if you don't believe me. It's called the gold saddle goldfish. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this fish. It's bright in colour, it's gold, and uh, it looks, you know, like a normal fish, yeah. But upon close inspections, divers realise when he saw this big fish, which was the same colour, and they thought, it can't be. We, this fish don't grow that large. It's only a small fish, yet there's a big one down there. So we went to investigate. I found it was a school of gold saddle fish swimming together in an impressive unity. And it was making the shape of a big fish. True. Not making this up. Yeah? I even double checked it in the encyclopedia. It was making an impression it was a big fish. It all was swimming together. It had made a big shape of that fish. But when you closely inspected it, there was a shoal of fish. There was, in fact, small fish. In fact, it was a perfect fish-shaped pattern as to appear like an imposing large fish. See, when this fish becomes threatened, it all comes together into a, a shape of a big fish. It's to scare off predators. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Isn't that cool? It's to scare off predators. And what it does, it comes together 
and in unity, in a shape with a big fish. Wow. And then the predators just disappear. That's the idea of it. They join together, they unite in a fish form, which appears to be much larger. The gold saddle goldfish, funny name, isn't it? Provides an important lesson for those providing threats. Do we turn inward, trusting only ourselves when we are threatened? Or do we huddle up with our neighbours, our friends in our churches to face the oncoming storm? So do we try and do it alone? Basically what I'm saying. Do we try and do it alone? Or do we do it together? Do we come together as one? See what I mean? See what I'm trying to say? That's a good reason we come to church. We come to be united. And when we are united, we can face the oncoming storm. And guess what? We become attractive. We become attractive to the outside world. You know, how many people do you know who say, well, I don't go to that church because I've heard so many people have been upset. It's not about that. It's about sharing one another's issues. It's about coming together. It's about not clicking. It's about being of one. One for all and all for one. Yeah? Perhaps we should have um, the flags and go, one for all and all for one every, every week. Perhaps a, but it's true, isn't it? Isn't it true? Isn't it true? And we need to be forewarned. We need to be forewarned in today's church. Because the enemy will try and get in where he can. The enemy doesn't want like our church to succeed. God does. God is stronger than he was in the world. God is stronger. We've seen that. But I pray this message this morning has touched you. Maybe you're feeling you're missing out of being a part of something bigger. You may feel that you want to experience unity and togetherness. Why not? You know, if you're listening online, why not go to your local church? Come to like us. We'd love to see you. Come and join Lighthouse like Community Church. We've met, we meet together every Sunday morning at 10.30. And it's great to see everybody here today, even though the football's on, let me say. <laughs> Perhaps it's, it's not so much because it's England and not Wales. <laughs> but, you know, like, could very easily stay at home and watch football. Come and be part of a loving church. We always, at like our church, put Jesus in the centre of all we do. We are united in love, united in peace, united in Jesus, united together. Whatever you're feeling or going through, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today to reach out to, to God. Reach out to Jesus. Unity is so important. One for all, all for one. One for all, all for one. I hope I've encouraged you this morning. Amen.
that you're with each and every one of us. Yes. I thank you that we will be united in, in you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that we will be that shining light on the hill. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for all we've heard and for 